All right, so there are three kinds of alcohol mentioned in this lecture. There's methanol, ethylene glycol, and there's ethanol. And um, <clears throat> ethanol is typically the one that you would drink. Ethylene glycol goes in your car to um, act as a coolant. And um, methanol is <clears throat> typically referred to as wood alcohol. And starting off here with um, methanol, <clears throat> we understand that it's very toxic. It has a lethal dose, uh, an LD50 of one to two milliliters per kilogram. And one of the first important things to know about uh, methanol is that it leads to blindness. And uh, the reason for this is because methanol, similar to eth ethanol, is broken down by alcohol de dehydrogenase. But when when methanol is broken down, uh, rather than forming um, uh, the aldehyde like the other one, this one forms a formaldehyde um, and also formate. And it's this formate that causes the uh, retina damage, leads to blindness. The symptoms, if somebody comes into your office and um, they, might, they might be totally fine mentally, their mental status would be fine, but they would have blurred vision, they'd have a slight formaldehyde smell maybe, and uh, you'd find, if you were to test their blood, that they have severe metabolic acidosis, an anion and, and osmolar gap. And so this would lead you um, to want to get a, a, a sure diagnosis. By doing that, you would take their blood levels, do a toxic screen on them, and uh, if the blood alcohol levels were greater than 50 milligrams per uh, kilogram, then you're going to want to do uh, hemodi uh, hemodialysis and uh, alcohol dehy dehydrogenase suppression at the same time. But let's talk about that for a second. So the first thing, though, that you're going to want to do, though, when this per if you find that this person has been uh, has methanol poisoning, is you're going to want to make sure you support respiration. Right now, like I said earlier, they ha they have uh, severe um, <clears throat> uh, severe metabolic acidosis. So uh, that means that their blood is really, really acidic, and that's not good for breathing, um, I guess. So you're going to want to support the respiration. And the way that you're going to do that is by giving them bicarbonate and fluids, which I guess will help flush out all of the acidity that they have in their blood. Um, so the next thing that you want to do is you're going to want to inhibit the alcohol dehydro dehydrogenase. Remember, it's the alcohol dehydrogenase that is converting the methanol into uh, formaldehyde. So um, to inhibit this, you're going to want to give them something called fomepazole uh, via the IV. And uh, the fomepazole will inhibit the alcohol dehydrogenase because it's the alcohol di dehydrogenase that is changing the methanol into formaldehyde. So if you stop this, then there's going to be less formaldehyde and formate, which means they're, they're not going to go blind as quickly or whatever. Um, <clears throat> if if uh, you can't afford the fomepazole, because fomepazole apparently is very expensive back in the old days, I guess they used to give them ethanol. And the way that ethanol works, it seems odd you'd give somebody uh, more alcohol when they have a different kind of alcohol poisoning, but essentially what happens is with this is that ethanol is a competitive inhibitor for alcohol dehydrogenase, which means that you have alcohol dehydrogenase here, and if the alcohol dehydrogenase breaks down methanol, it's going to form formaldehyde. But if it breaks down ethanol instead, because ethanol's there, you call this a competitive inhibitor, and it has higher affinity, so it'll prefer to break down the ethanol over the methanol. So if so this is here, it's going to break it down, and, and when ethanol is broken down, um, it doesn't form the formaldehyde, and so it's not as toxic. So that will help, um, help the person to not form as much formate or, or formaldehyde. So now you're inhibiting, so you first you supported the respiration with bicarbonate fluids, they're giving them the alcohol, alcohol dehydrogenase um, inhibitor, inhibiting that. Then you're going to want to give them uh, dialysis which is going to essentially clean out the alcohol out of their blood. But you want to make sure that, because uh, it's going to take out both the ethanol and the methanol, or the fomepazole or whatever, so you might need to put some ethanol back in there to make sure that you're keeping the, um, 
so that you're keeping the alcohol dehydrogenase active on breaking down ethanol instead of methanol, which would be bad. So, and then lastly, during the recovery, you're going to want to give them some folate um, to, re to replete the body's stores. And that is uh, methanol.